Back in 2021, OnePlus released its first wearable device, the OnePlus Watch, and it had some serious flaws. And now nearly three years later, OnePlus is releasing its next effort, the OnePlus Watch 2, addressing some of the original's shortcomings directly. But is it enough? Well, I'm gonna put these two smartwatches side by side to find out. A Mobile World Congress is underway in Barcelona this week, and one of the biggest announcements, at least so far from the event, is OnePlus's new wearable, the OnePlus Watch 2. A $300 smartwatch in the US, $400 Canadian, that is available for pre-order now with a release date of March 4th, 2024. Now the company sent me this watch to review and while I'm not quite ready for my full review yet, I can say that the company is obviously trying new things to make this device a very promising follow-up. So let's take a step back back for a second. Now, when the original OnePlus watch came out a few years ago, reviewers, including myself, were quick to point out that the device really felt like a first effort. They actually got a lot wrong uh, in the software experience that it makes it really hard to recommend it. Though the price of $159 was very affordable, the design, while functional, was pretty uninspired. And beyond that, its biggest downfall was its software. OnePlus had its own proprietary software on board, choosing to bypass the more traditional Wear OS option. And that decision limited the usability of the device compared to its competitors. It meant that, at least at launch, the watch wasn't capable of very basic things like voice assistant integration and always on display and third party watch faces and app support. Now, to its credit, OnePlus later rolled out an update to add an always on display feature. So at least there's that. Now with the OnePlus Watch 2, that changes. Driving the watch under Underneath the glass is Google's latest smartwatch operating system, Wear OS 4. It's based on Android 13. This gives the wearable immediate access and integration with the apps most Android users have come to expect. So maps, wallet, calendar, just to name a few, as well as an avalanche of third-party apps from the Play Store. Not to mention, one of my favorite features, FastPair, is on board with the new watch, which aims to make setup even easier. This system-wide software change should make most critics happy, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this addresses some of my criticisms from the original outing. Not only that, but Wear OS 4 on the OnePlus Watch 2 is supported by the Qualcomm Snapdragon W5 chip for all Wear OS functions, as well as a Best 2700 efficiency chipset. That's right, two chips inside which enable a hybrid Wear OS interface, one chip, the Best 2700 running RTOS, which by the way was the OS that powered the original in its entirety, that handles this watch's basic functions. While the other chip, Snapdragon W5, kicks Wear OS 4 into gear for interfacing with the watch, providing things like notifications, as well as things like downloading third-party apps and watch faces from the Play Store. OnePlus calls this dual engine architecture, and it's meant to eke ever more battery life out of the smartwatch between charges. Battery life was something that impressed me with the original smartwatch. You get life for days, literally. Uh, I charged it to full eight days ago. I'm still running on the same damn charge. Uh, what? Where am I at? Yeah. I just chalked it up to the fact that the original really didn't do much to begin with. OnePlus rated the original 402 milliamp hour battery as capable of up to 14 days between charges, an unusually long time for a traditional smartwatch to last. The new OnePlus Watch 2 has a larger 500 milliamp hour battery hidden inside, which is quite large for modern smartwatches. OnePlus says it can offer up to 100 hours of regular use in what it calls smart mode, but that distance requires the always on display to be de deactivated. And the watch warns you about significant battery depletion if you choose to turn that on. So you have some choices to make. I'll be curious to test this difference out in the coming weeks. Oh, and a real quick reminder that if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to the channel so you know you don't miss future content like this. It really helps me out. Okay, so the original had a paltry one gig of RAM and only four gigs of internal storage, which you could use for things like playing local stored music. OnePlus even warned on its product page that the number that you saw there was even less considering the system occupied a large portion of that storage. OnePlus has thankfully addressed these shortcomings with the OnePlus Watch 2 by increasing it to 2 gigs of RAM and a much larger 32 gigs of internal storage space. A material difference between the two, but also up to the modern standard for smartwatches of this price category. The hardware looks very different when compared to the original. The 
OnePlus watch was a basic circular timepiece. No frills, no real personality even, not to mention a rather large piece of hardware that, yes, worked on my large wrists, but was definitely a bit too large for many potential wearers. The OnePlus Watch 2 has a bit more style to differentiate it from the basics of the OG, but it's still a large timepiece with a 1.43 inch sapphire crystal display that is only very slightly larger than the original at 1.39 inches. The new watch is also heavier than the original as well, if only slightly, 80 grams compared to 76 grams with strap. And the weight difference can't be blamed on the stainless steel chassis, which was also included in the original and was actually a big bonus considering its low price point. Both watches are IP68 certified for dust and water resistance. Neither watch supports cellular connectivity without being tethered to a smartphone. And both watches integrate core fitness functionality that wearers have really come to expect at this point. However, I expect the OnePlus Watch 2 to offer much more than the original in this regard, considering the watch now taps into Google's years worth of development in this area. So overall, it seems at least on its surface that the OnePlus Watch 2 directly addresses some of the key shortcomings of the original. The hybrid OS architecture is a truly unique approach that has some serious potential for increasing the life of the device between charges. And though it's not the most original or even the most stylish timepiece, it's a far cry from the bland personality void approach of the original OnePlus watch. If you want to be sure to catch my full review of the OnePlus watch 2 in the next few weeks, please subscribe to this channel by hitting that familiar button down below. And while you're at it, leave a comment. Let me know if OnePlus made the right changes in your mind with its sequel hardware. I would really love to know what you think, and I might include some of your thoughts in my upcoming review. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching my comparison of the OnePlus Watch 1 to the OnePlus Watch 2. I have my review coming up in a few weeks. We'll see you next time.